Today, I'm gonna to show you exactly how to utilize JavaScript and the Greensock animation platform along with scroll trigger in order to create this snazzy horizontal scrolling effect. Now it is sure to impress your grandma, so let's not waste any time and get started. If you enjoyed this video, check out designcourse.com where you can learn UI, UX, CSS, and more with my custom interactive platform that makes learning fun and easy. Also, one final thing, definitely check out designcourse.com forward slash AF, which is the advanced front end landing page for collecting your email address to be notified when this awesome new course comes in to place where you can use JavaScript, GSAP, Barba.js, and 3.js to build breathtaking interactive UIs, sort of like the one I'm working on right now for my own agency website. So I'm gonna be showing you how to create really cool stuff like this. All right, so let's get started. I already have the HTML in the CSS up, but we're gonna do a quick, a very quick recap of this. That way we can just focus on the JavaScript part, the meat and bones of the tutorial, so to speak. Um, so if I right click this and open with live server, this is what we currently have. I, and let me just come down here. Let me, I close other tabs, okay. Um, there's no there's no scrolling occurring right now, um, and just to look at the uh, the a few points of the HTML, we have a wrapper that wraps around everything. Then we also have a container, a div class container. Then we have this SVG element, and pay attention to uh, the mask. There's a mask right here, and that's for real quickly just to show you. That is for this part right here, this, this whole little progress bar. That is the SVG element that I created within Figma. All right, so here's it filled out. And if I double click, there's an actual, I created a mask here in Figma. And this is kind of the idea. If I move this back and forth, you can see it kind of just shows this progress bar going up like this. And so that's gonna be what we're gonna achieve with the, I. Uh, the JavaScript to move this mask in order to create that effect. We're also gonna make sure that this is position fixed and stays in the viewport as well. So going back to our HTML, um, outside of that, there's really nothing all that crazy. Uh, we just have a container and then inside of that container, we have these uh, three sections. And so looking at the CSS, one of the very important things for this effect to work is the overflow X hidden on the wrapper that wraps around the, the content that you want to be scrolling towards. So if I take overflow X hidden off and save it, and we go back to our project, you'll see that we have this scroll bar at the bottom now where we can just go. Now, if I use my mouse scroll wheel though, it's just it's not gonna do the horizontal scrolling. That's why I have, we have to use uh, GSAP and scroll trigger to set that stuff up. But this is what we have here. And it's just three section elements. Each are 100 viewport width. And then the actual container is 300 viewport width in width. So hopefully that makes sense. That is right here. Width of the container is 300 viewport width. And then the section, each section has 100 viewport width as well. So really outside of that, there's nothing of note here, everything is, uh, it's just those, those two things that are pertinent to make these, uh, this uh, sort of effect, this horizontal scrolling effect work. So you'll notice down here, we're importing a few things. Um, if you go to Google and type GSAP3 CDN, you can get this snippet right here and also scroll trigger plugin. We want that as well. And then main JS of course is right here. Now I have a couple properties defined already um, and that is for our container. Um, also, we're using GSAP utils to array in order to get an array of the sections. So there's three sections and this is what sections is in reference to. We also have our texts, which is um, using to array from GSAP utils. Uh, we're, we're searching for a class called anim. So there are, different things that I want to animate in when you do the horizontal scrolling. And so any of those elements that I wanna animate in, I just add a class of anim to. And you can see I've done it right here, not on the first section, but on the second sections I have that, and third sections I have that added as well. And then also um, we have our mask because we wanna animate that mask based on the scroll position. So 
With that said, let's go ahead and get started working on the actual code. So the first thing we want to do is to get the actual uh, horizontal scro scrolling working. So we're going to going to create a property called uh, scroll tween, and we're going to say gsap2. All right, and we're going to pass in our sections. All right, our sections defined here at line two as the selector. And then here's the object in which we're going to get this working. So what we specify is x percent negative 100 times sections dot length minus one. All right, so a little bit confusing right there. Don't put a semicolon, put a comma. Um, but essentially, this is taking 100 times. And it's just multiplying this. Like right now, if we console logged this little equation, we would get I uh, 200 or negative 200. Um, and this is allowing us to know how far this uh, the, the, the scroll needs to occur essentially. Um, we're gonna put ease none for this. And then we're also gonna define our scroll trigger, which is imported in the HTML document at the bottom. And so our container, our trigger rather, is going to be a container. So our container, of course, is the, the element that's wrapping around everything right here. And then we're gonna put pin true, this is required, otherwise it's just gonna scroll right past the container. You want it to pin while you're using your mouse scroll wheel or the scroll bar, and you want it to stay there so that it'll horizontally push this over. Then we're gonna put scrub one and then end is gonna be plus equals 3000. If you play with this value, you'll see it will increase or decrease the speed at which you uh, will scroll through those three sections. Ah, I'm an idiot. Scroll tigger, it's trigger. Boy, what am I doing? All right, let's try that again. All right, so now you can see it's scrolling past. And then once it gets to the end, it's just coming down to our next section underneath. And it's nice, notice how it kind of has like a smooth scroll effect. So if you play with that value of n plus equals 3000, you can uh, basically change the speed. Now let's go ahead and get the progress bar working. It's actually not that hard. So what we'll do is define a gsap2. And this is gonna be width 100, oop, gsap2. Got to put our selector in there, mask. There we go. We're going to put a width of 100%. Scroll trigger, not tigger this time. The trigger is going to be wrapper. All right, and then start is going to be top left and scrub will be one. There we go. So if I save this and we go back, there we go, we've tied it up. As you can see, it's following, going all the way here. Awesome. Now, what if, for instance, we wanted to have each one of these elements or anything with the anim class to kind of animate in as we're scrolling to these different sections. So let's go ahead and do that underneath here. Essentially, we're gonna take, we have to get access to our sections up here. So we're gonna take each section and we're going to for each that to iterate over all the sections that it found. We're gonna pass in the section. All right, and in here we ha now have to grab a hold of all of the animation or the anim classes that are tied to this specific section right here. So we say section, or ret rather, sorry, let text equals section, query selector all, because remember there could be multiple of them, anim. All right. Now what we can do is define a new green sock animation, uh, gsap from, text, and what do we wanna do with the text? Well, we're going from 
So it means we're just gonna go from these values that we specify, which is gonna be like Y, maybe negative 130, opacity zero. So it's gonna come in and down uh, from being hidden and then fade in and just kind of bounce in. Uh, we could set a duration of two. We can make the animation interesting by giving it an elastic easing. So it'll kind of like bounce a little bit. We can stagger them so that they don't, don't all come in at the same time. Maybe a tenth of a second between each one that it finds or each element with anim that it finds. So we add that with the, sta uh, the, the, the stagger property. And then we do scroll trigger as well. And the scroll trigger, for the trigger property, we actually pass in section, which is defined right up here. And then we have to add container animation as well, which is set to the scroll train, that scroll tween property up there. All right. If you don't do this, it won't work properly. Now we're going to say start left center. And to visualize where things are being hooked up to in terms of the scroll trigger, we can set markers true just to debug. Uh, it, it's great to add this just to see what's happening in the, the, the browser itself. So you can see right here we have start and scroller end. We have scroller start right here, and that's because I put left center. So this center element, or this little label is showing up there, uh, meaning you'll see what happens when we get there. And then you can actually see these kind of two that are overlapped over here. So if I come right there, right where it said it, it says start right here, that's when this animation came in. And again, you can play with when the animation comes in based on adjusting the start value. There's also a end property and they have a lot of different settings that you can specify. Um, and then we're going to come over here and this one's going to come in as well. Look at that. And then once you're satisfied with the actual product, you can just go ahead and comment out the markers property and just go back. And there we go. Very cool sort of um, scrolling animation. All right, everybody. Uh, definitely check out designcourse.com forward slash AF uh, for the advanced front end course, which is going to be releasing sometime in 2023 where you're gonna be able to build really cool interactive things like this, for instance. This is uh, my new agency website I'm starting to work on. Uh, you're gonna learn how to work with GSAP, 3JS to create interactive front ends. So definitely enter your email there. Make sure to subscribe here and I'll see you all soon. Goodbye.